Well, despite a reported decrease in serious crime so far this year, the government is echoing the sentiments of a growing number of Bahamians. Enough is enough. And putting some action behind that means building on a multi-pronged crime approach of prevention, policing, prosecution, punishment and rehabilitation by eliminating gangs and gang-related activities. On the legislative end, the Prime Minister this morning led off debate on the anti-gang bill, proposed legislation that paves the way for stiff penalties for those actively involved in or supporting a gang culture. With that story, we go now to our Altavis Munnings. Good evening, Altavis. Good evening to you, Makushla, and good evening, Bahamas. The Davis administration is making it quite clear that they're willing to take on the organized gangs who destroy lives and communities. While the data on how many gangs are actually prevalent in the country isn't available right now, the Davis administration's anti-gang bill gives law enforcement and the justice system powerful new tools in the fight against criminal gangs. And we cannot lose another generation of our young men. We cannot let the young Bahamian men who could and should be our heroes and leaders become instead victims and perpetrators. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis was very passionate about putting a hold on gangs and gang violence in tabling the anti-gang bill in the House of Assembly on Wednesday. Clause 3 establishes evidence of a person's gang involvement, including symbols, signs, codes, markings, or clothing, and criminal activity linked to a gang or a person participating in gang-related activity. Clauses 5 and 6 legally defines gang membership and gang activity related to recruitment, initiation, the commission of offenses, acts of intimidation and violence, support, and other activities. Now that points to a $100,000 fine or 25-year prison sentence. The same penalty granted to a proven gang member in possession of bulletproof vests, firearms, or weapons for gang-related activities. A life sentence will be granted to someone who is proven to be a gang member and ends up taking a life. Recruiting a gang member warrants a prison sentence of up to 20 years and 25 years when it's a child being recruited. Harboring levies an up to 20 year sentence and concealing can earn the convicted party up to 25 years at the Department of Corrections. Now the Prime Minister admits the Bahamian people are tired angry and can no longer accept a reality in which thousands of young men participate in gangs like it's cool or somehow makes them tougher. When the consequences for engaging in criminal activity finally arrive, whether in the form of death in the streets or incarceration, that is a penalty that must be faced alone. You know, gang member can face that with you. Once that sentence is pronounced, once that bullet is fired from that gang, no one will do, this will do the time for you or take that bullet for you. Prime Minister Davis contends while crime statistics are trending down, it's still too high. And that's why he maintains these are harsh penalties placed in the anti-gang bill, but they are there because these are harsh times. Reporting live in studio for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Altaviz Munnings. Back to you, Mukashla. It's gold for the Olympic champion. On May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. 